basically. Uh, and one of those models that's very good at describing the behavior of geomaterials is a model called the Sandia Geo Model or Cayenta. And so this model, uh, the picture on the far right is the pie plane. So the nice thing about this model you see is it has smooth surfaces, uh, at least in the way it's drawn here. It can actually replicate some of the other models as well. But you notice that there's no sharp corners, at least the way it's drawn here, and that's a nice thing uh, because then we can use, if we choose to, we could use associated flow. Um, this cross section here you can see from the first picture uh, kind of defines the cross section of the second picture and so this you can actually see that there's some asymmetry in the model this is due to say kinematic hardening so it's actually shifted about you, you notice this side uh, on the top is a little bit larger than the bottom side that means that the model is actually uh, shifted along the sigma 1 equals sigma 2 equals sigma 3 uh, direction and that could be due to kin kinematic hardening or other uh, physics and, and so uh, this model also has a cap so in other words that there's some ultimate hydrostatic stress that will cause this guy to fail and this is also more realistic of, of geo models uh, I mean of, of geo materials uh, and so this is called a, a cap type model so this is a very sophisticated model it's really beyond the scope of what we'll do in this class uh, this model is distributed uh, open source so if you had an application you could uh, get this model but it but because of the the nature of the model it's quite expensive to run so a lot of times we'll choose to use more simple simple things uh, so that we don't uh, eat up so much computational expense in, in the solution of the plasticity model. All right, so that basically concludes our theoretical discussion of plasticity. We'll return to plasticity later on in the course when we're talking about the computational implementation, and we'll actually code some of these things up, uh, some of the more simple models with associated flow and otherwise. Uh, you know, we could, and, and you know, typically plasticity is taught as a whole course, so there's just no way we're going to be able to cover all the details uh, crammed into to this course. So with that, I want to shift gears a little bit.